Hey everybody, I know uh, nobody's watching yet, but I will hold on a second and wait for you guys to come in, whoever is interested in joining. Um, also checking out my Twitter to make sure that it indeed posted, because I posted a, a link just in case people want to join. I see there's one viewer, hello! Hello out there, two viewers, hi! How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for joining. Um, so, <clears throat> man, let's see if this went through my Twitter first. I have a lot to talk about because this week has been kind of crazy and I didn't have the time to sit down and make a, like, video that I normally do every Friday. So, since I worked the morning shift this morning, uh, there goes Jinro. Every time I stream, he whines. Um... Since I worked the morning shift this morning, I figured when I get home in the afternoon, I will do a live stream to make up for the lack of normal Friday morning video that I do. Um, and hopefully next week I will get back on that train. Uh, I have a few products uh, that I wanted to, uh, I guess, like, test out, try, show off sort of thing. They're really cute. Um, I can show you some. Oh, excuse me, I just, I just ate dinner. So, these are some products that I want to show off in next week's video. I have, like, these, uh, Japanese toy slash candy machines. Like, this one is, like, a little, um, like a cup. You know, like a little mug. And it dispenses the candy that's here into console or the console hi super console bro sorry <laughs> it dispenses the candy into this little cup so i want to see how this works um and i apologize for my dog he's he's downstairs and barking up a storm because every time i come up here or try to stream and i'm talking to somebody and nobody's here he like he whines because he knows if he keeps doing it, it's going to get on my nerves and then I'm going to stop what I'm doing and give him a T-R-E-A-T. -E but this time, I think I'm just going to let him bark it out. And I apologize if you hear him screaming. Like, I definitely am not torturing my dog. He's just, like, whiny. Very, very whiny little boy. That's what he is. So I showed you that one, and then this is like a little Gashapon machine, and I got a couple of these because they stack, so I want to see how that goes. And this is like, kind of like a roulette slash bubblegum looking machine. So I wanted to show these off in next week's video, and then the following week I want to do another Toriba unboxing because I have a few boxes coming my way. So, yes. Jinro! I work with dogs all day, and today I had a very yappy dog for like the first three hours of work, and I, I was like, man, I'm going to go deaf from this dog. This dog is going to um, bust my eardrums out. <laughs> and it wasn't my own. <laughs> it was like this little, I think it was a Chihuahua Miniature Pincher mix, like a long hair Chihuahua Minpin. Um, I'm not going to say the company, but basically I work for a boarding facility for dogs and cats. So like say you or a family member have to go out on vacation and you don't have anybody to watch your dog or you don't trust them to watch your dog or your cats, um, you can take them to the hotel, basically a hotel for pets and um, we'll take care of them for you. We run doggy daycare, doggy day camp. Uh, overnight boarding. No, it's not PETA. <laughs> overnight boarding. Um, we also have, like, if, you know, for dogs who don't get along with other dogs, we have, like, one-on-one -on -one care. So, you know, they play with an individual, like, a person, you know? So there's lots of, like, different options. So I get to work with dogs and cats all day, and I love it because I love animals. Um, and so that's kind of been my profession you know as like a paid job that I've been doing over the years like I've running up on mm, three and a half years of experience of that oh 
excuse me. Oh, hello, Sasha. I know you see Sasha in the beginning of my videos. She doesn't always look enthusiastic because her eyes are pretty. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> she doesn't always look too excited about everything. <laughs> but she's a good girl, and she's got, like, this wonderful tum. Yeah, a big old tum. Hey, how's it going, Kaden? So, ooh, ooh, but, 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 you're taking up the whole the whole screen. You can't do that. I know. She's like, I wish I had my own show because I'm the most entertaining of all. Yes, you would be like the number one YouTuber, wouldn't you, Sasha? You would just talk drama about everybody and flex all of your like cat toys and everything. Mwah. Okay. So anyway, yes, this, uh, this week was really busy. So I had a friend from NorCal move down to SoCal and I've been anxiously awaiting that to happen. Um, I've been waiting for months and so we hung out and then, uh, both of our significant others, uh, work in the game industry and so they had to get passes for E3. So Cal Uber, haha, ha, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Clever. Um so yeah, we had to go pick up their E3 badges um Sunday. Yeah, on a Sunday. And uh a friend of ours from New York was in town. So he showed up and I haven't seen him in forever. He actually had just flown into America from being in Japan. And uh, he had some, like, things he picked up for me, which was, like, amazing, because uh, he went to Universal Studios in Japan. And for those of you don't who don't know, they have a um, Sailor Moon, like, 4, they call it a 4D experience. And uh, they have a bunch of, like, Universal Studio exclusive, like, J Universal Studios Japan exclusive Sailor Moon merchandise. And, uh... There's like only one thing that I wanted from there and I had not told anybody. I had not told anybody about the thing that I wanted or the thing I had had my eyes on because, you know, I don't really know anybody who was in Japan. I didn't even know Leonard, like my friend, I had no idea he was in Japan at the time. He was visiting a friend for his birthday apparently. And I just figured, you know, if they did go up on sale online and they're not, like, crazy expensive, which most resale stuff from that is because it's exclusive, that maybe I'd pick it up. But, um, it wasn't looking likely. So I remember I was talking to my friend and I was asking him how he liked the Sailor Moon experience, like, at Universal Studios. And then, you know, I was like, oh man, maybe I can go if I go to Japan at the end of the year, like I'm hoping to. And he said that apparently the Sailor Moon stuff in Universal Studios ends in like a month or two. So then I wouldn't have had the experience myself. So that made me sad. But I was telling him, I was like, oh man, because there was like this one thing that I wanted and it... And I thought it was the size of a popcorn bucket. Oh yeah, I'm getting there. I'm just like building up to it. <laughs> Super console. I'm building up to it. <laughs> uh, so the thing I wanted, I thought was the size of a popcorn bucket. Like, you you know, the ones you see at like Disney World or Disneyland when you go or when you see people going. Um, but, it, uh, and I said, it looks like Luna P. I said, I saw people on Instagram posting it. And well... And he's like, oh, you mean this? Like, he pulled it out of his bag. And, like, I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I wanted. But, like, I had no idea that it was this small. Because <laughs> it was actually, it's not for popcorn. This is had candy in it. I mean, uh, he didn't have candy in it when he gave it to me. Because he said, he's like, I'm sorry, my, my friend ate all the candy that was in it. But I have some, like, gosh upon, like, stuff in here right now. Because I didn't want to lose them. They're, like, little miniature looking candles for a Sailor Moon gosh upon birthday cake and I didn't want to lose the number so I just put it in there so this is it not like underwhelming maybe for some people but it's overwhelming for me because I love Chibusa and I love Luna P and this was an item I really wanted to get my hands on for my collection so I'm I'm in love with it <laughs> I, I love little things like this and especially that you can open it up and put stuff inside. I'm a sucker for containers and stuff like that. 
And then, well, he got me some other things, too. He said he found, like, some old Gashapon, uh, like, from the early 2000s of Sailor Moon when they uh, re-released -re um, some toys and stuff called Sailor Moon World. And I had had some of them already, but they were missing pieces that I no longer had anymore. They're just completely gone because I had them when I was, like, a teenager. And then he also brought these little plushie, this little plushie set for me. Um, so I haven't opened them yet, but this is really cute. And I think this is honestly the cutest Chibi Moon plush that I own. The eyes are super cute. They have like a different style from some of the other ones. So uh, I still need to figure out where I'm going to display these guys. But yeah, so on to E3. So my husband went, what was it, Tuesday? Jeez, old Jinro is just barking up a storm. I apologize. <laughs> You could probably hear he like squeaks when he's like desperate but I'm just gonna let him do his thing again for those who might have just joined my dog does this every time I stream because he wants a treat and he knows he'll get it if he keeps whining like this because I want him to be quiet but this time I'm testing the waters and I'm not gonna cave in unless it lasts like an hour then I'll cave in because I don't want him whining for a whole hour. That's just annoying. And I know you guys don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Oh yeah, I have the Human Luna plush too. It is very similar. It's actually whoop, right behind me, right there. You see it? Whoop, there. Neat, there. It's kind of hard. Kind of hard to like direct. I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I, I one I. I'm like all over the place like um, my thoughts I, I had such a crazy week that there's so much going on in my head but I apologize I'm like not I'm like dressed really down I mean I'm normally dressed like this in my videos but uh, I have like no makeup on and I'm just like ugh, been tired tired all week so anyway my husband went to E3 first he works uh and makes Call of Duty and uh so they were having a team photo there and so he was able to go very early in the day and <laughs> go to different lines and stuff like that. And I told him that there was only one, like, swag that I really would like if he was able to get it. And uh, here it is. It is the Valkyria Chronicles 4, um, what's his name? Ragnarok hat. I almost called him Koromaru, but that's from Persona 3. But uh, the Ragnarok hat. And, like, I put this on Jinro. Ooh, excuse me. I put this on Jinro, my dog. And I posted on Twitter and I said, it's a sheep wearing a hat of a sheep wearing a hat. It's so cute. My, my hair is kind of up, so I don't know if it'll go on correctly, but oh my god, it's kind of big on my head. <laughs> and my hair's poking me in the eye. Oh, it's so freaking cute. I love it. I love it. You know, I honestly, should... it's like 13 minutes into the stream and he... He really is testing my patience today. I might have to go down there and give him something. I wish I brought something up here to give him, but I don't have anything. Anyway, so this was like the number one item that I really, really wanted from E3. Because I know I knew by the time I got off work and I was able to go that that line would be capped. So Soul Calibur, yes, looked awesome. They had some really awesome cosplayers. Death Stranding, I didn't get to play, but they had a really awesome statue of uh, Norman Reedus with the fetus. <laughs> and uh, let's see, what what game did I have? What games did I play? So I got to play Spyro, which is my friend Nessa's favorite game, and they were giving out these patches. It's like little embroidered patch so I'm happy that I was able to get this I didn't go yesterday they were giving out a different prize but they wouldn't tell us what it was and I was gonna go and try to get it for her because that's her favorite game but I was just too darn exhausted from hanging out with my friends all week uh, driving everywhere working on top of that so I absolutely had no time to film and edit at all I was just too too exhausted so again I know I'm repeating myself but that's why I'm doing this live stream today to try to make up for that so I apologize to you guys that there wasn't the regular video um the the, the one announcement that I was disappointed that I did not hear that I wanted to hear that I was hoping to hear 
but it didn't happen was Animal Crossing. I wanted Animal Crossing for Switch, but we got Smash. And it just me personally, um, I'm not a big fan of Smash. I don't hate it or anything. I'm just like really bad at like when there's so many things going on the screen like if there's so many players it's hard for me to pay attention but for those of you and uh, my friends and everybody who's excited for smash i'm very happy for them because they actually got to hear about something they wanted to hear about <laughs> and i i wonder what that's like <laughs> i really wonder what that's like because i wanted animal crossing on the switch but what can you do um the one thing that I saw at, um, I almost called it PAX, the, at E3 that I saw that I thought was amazing. I, I posted this on Twitter too. I don't know if you guys follow me on there, but they had these like replicas, like props of different things from Nintendo. So they had like the Splattershot Pro, like, um, basically like the Splatoon gun and they had some other items that god i forget which games they were from but the one that stood out to me though was this like beat up looking can and it was from hogan's alley and hogan's alley was a game that came with duck hunt for the original nintendo entertainment system the nes um that i played when i was a kid and when i saw that like prop can from hogan's alley i like i like flipped because I love that game so much. Like, I would say Hogan's Alley and 3D World Runner are, like, my two favorite classic Nintendo games from back in the day. So, to see that being represented at a 2018 E3 made me very, very happy. Um, let's see of the other stuff that I got at E3. Um, well, we got this giant, like, inflatable bat thing that's for a, a Switch game that's coming out that, for the life of me, I cannot think of the name of but my husband uh stood in line for that and then he also got this big persona bag which you know he he has somewhere I don't I forget where he put it but he got those things and then when I went I got the spiral patch I got this t-shirt because I voted for the cats because okay the reason why I mean I love I love all animals it's hard for me to pick what team I wanted to win because I love Pomeranians and I like dogs but this cat this cat Look at his eyes! Like, I had to vote for this cat. So, it was freaking cute. Um, I don't have the bat with me. It's in the other room and I'm, I just don't want to get up and get it. I'm lazy. I'm sorry. It's like, it's like big red and white and it's inflatable. <sighs> it's vote for... It's uh, Shaq News, the chair pet. You gotta vote for the chair pet, and it was the cats versus the dog. But, like, the eyes just cracked me up, and I'm like, okay, I didn't even know I'd get a t-shirt for voting. I just wanted to vote because, like, the, the cat looks so cute and funny. So I was like, okay, I want to do this. And then I also got this fate. It's like a little paper hat. I, I didn't put it together because I wanted to just keep it flat, but I like this character, but right now... Again, the name, the name is like failing me because my husband never plays this character in Fate Go. He always has like the different versions of Saber. <laughs> so, um, he likes like Santa Saber, um, a lot and, uh, Shuten Doji, but, uh, I like this character, but I don't know her name. Like, apparently I don't know, like it enough. Hi, Ashley G. How's it going? Apparently I don't like her enough because I don't remember her name, but like she's a fox girl and she's really cute and obviously, well, foxes and pink hair, you know, I'm just gonna gravitate. I'm gonna gravitate towards that. Um, but yeah, I know that you just, uh, you just joined, so I'm letting you know that today's video is trying to make up for the lack of normal, regular video that I usually do every Friday because my week has been so darn busy with work and friends and meeting people I haven't seen in a while and going to dinner and going to E3 and again work again and all this stuff and then today in the morning I felt sick but I feel a lot better now but it's just been a whirlwind and next week I will be on track with a new video it's gonna be like a let's try it kind of video with some Japanese candy 
and uh, I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, and then by the week following, I should have some more packages in by Toriba, so I can do another big Toriba um, prize unboxing. Hold on, let me let me get some let me get some sippage. <sighs> yeah, that's good. That's the good stuff. Graveyard Girl would be proud, okay? Because this is sweet tea. Graveyard Girl or Bunny Meyer, don't know if you guys follow her, but she's like one of my favorite YouTubers. And um, thanks, Ashley. I I love doing the unboxings myself, but oh my god, my wallet does not. My wallet does not like those unboxings. But anyway, my favorite YouTuber, Bunny Meyer, aka Graveyard Girl. She loves her sweet tea. She loves the sippy sippy, and I like to sippy sippy right next, or right with her, not right, I wish I could sippy sippy right next to her, that'd be cool, that'd be cool if I could actually get to meet her someday, um, one can, one can hope, one can wish, so, oh yeah, no, McDonald's is like, it's not good, it's not good for you, but I love their sweet tea, I love their sweet tea to death, and, um, I can't resist it and well I mean I haven't actually had a lot of like sweet drinks th this week which I'm trying to cut back on um, so I treated myself because it's Friday and it's payday and I played a little bit of Tori but today I wasn't I mean I was successful I got a couple prizes like literally just two of the same one I won one for my husband for his birthday next month and then, then I won one for a friend because I knew he was gonna want it too so, but it's not like I don't have a big haul from today. Mm, I love Mountain Dew, too. But Mountain Dew is horrible for you. So I try not to. Oh, yeah, I got the, my strawberry, you know, my strawberry bed here. And then the, Naomi's, like, laying on it. She's, like, more camera shy than Sasha for some reason. Um, And I want to get... There's these really cool paper lanterns that I saw online. But, like, the shipping for them is ridiculous because I know that they're lightweight. And I'm just like, why do they want so much money for the shipping on these things? But they're, like, strawberry... They're strawberry paper lanterns. Like, they're shaped like strawberries, too. I'm like, I need those. I need those to hang on my ceiling there. Jenna, quit acting like a spaz, honey. So, oh, my God, you did... Oh, my God, Ashley, I saw this, and I thought they were so funny. Like, um... Have you ever seen when they had uh, personal massagers on there? <laughs> I always thought it'd be funny to like win one just for the lols, but I'm like, I don't know if that's appropriate for YouTube or anywhere else. Like me and my friends could just laugh about it. <sighs> baby, 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 Sasha Boo laying over there. Yeah, I know, like. <laughs> Sometimes, man, sometimes Toriba gets in some questionable stuff. But anyway, oh, speaking of boob mouse pads, I, I have one right here. This is like my regular mouse pad. Yes, a personal massager is what you're thinking it is, but I, I just want to be PG-13. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I saw them. I was like, what? Oh, well, you know, it's, it's like really funny. It's like something you would never see. Oh, funny story about this Yoko, um, this Yoko mouse pad. I won this as a prize, uh, for a cosplay contest on this website called ACP or American Cosplay Paradise, like a long time ago. And, um, oh, excuse me. It's the sweet tea. Um, but yeah, I won it uh, uh, on a cosplay like contest for, for cosplaying Yoko. And uh, I got an art book too. Which honestly, it was a secondary prize. But I thought that that secondary prize was way better than the main prizes that they had. So I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, oh my god. Uh, so, let's see. So I went to E3. I already talked about that. I've been working a lot, so that's been taking up uh, some time. I mean, like, it's, it's a part-time job, so it's, like, not a lot of hours, but, like, it takes up a good amount of my day, and it's a physical job, so I get, like, so exhausted at the end of the day. Um, 
But, you know, I'm trying to save up some money. But, you know, Toriba is tempting. You know how that is. Let's see, what else did I want to talk to you about today? I don't know. <laughs> I had, like, things planned. I should have, like, made a script. There's, like, some bullet points ahead of time, you know, and been completely prepared. But, uh, uh, I'm never completely prepared for anything. Yeah, Tori broke. I'm Tori broke. That's definitely... I, man, you you just here with the puns today. You're like slinging them puns. You're like the pun dealer. I like that. <laughs> uh, what anime have I enjoyed the- Oh, girl. Oh, oh, oh my god. Okay, well that's an excuse for me to actually go downstairs and grab what I need to grab and I can take you with me. But I like Boku no Hero Academia or My Hero Academia. That's been, like, one that I've been really enjoying. Darling in the Franks. I'm really enjoying Darling in the Franks. I also... Oh, yeah, I'll show them when I go downstairs. Um, Let's see. What else? What else is it? Oh, boy. Yeah, I've been trying to go off looking for tries too. But since I got the job, I'm like, oh, I actually have some money. And, like, it's super tempting. Because they usually always have something I like. Um, but... Honestly, I love it when they don't have something, like, because it means that I'm not spending any money, and that's good. <laughs> um, so let's see, I already said, Darling the Franks, uh, My Hero Academia, uh, Shokugeki no Soma, or Food Wars. I really like Food Wars. I need to watch the new Card Captor Sakura. Um, I just, I, I'm trying to catch up on so many different animes that I just kind of put that one aside for now until I finish everything else. Because I still have to watch the, or uh, finish the Ancient Magus Bride. Like, I, I was watching it hardcore and then a new season of anime came out and then I started watching the new stuff and then never went back to the old stuff. And then there's this new one on Netflix. And the name is escaping me, but it's about, like, a girl who's, like, she has a weapon. And it kind of looks like old-timey, like, 1800s type thing. She yeah, Violet Evergarden. Yes. So we've been watching that. Hey, Rilakuma chan Yeah, Violet Evergarden was gorgeous. Like, the animation's beautiful. I just watched the first episode, and the first episode brought me to tears. And so, yes, I do remember you, really, Kumachan. I remember you. I remember you from the last stream I did, which, which was quite a while ago. But I remember you. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> but yeah, like, oh, that that show's so good. There's so there's so much good stuff coming out, and um, the stories are really varied, and I like that. They're not like all similar. Kind of like I I don't know if you remember. I haven't watched the Castlevania one on Netflix, but my husband has, and he says it's amazing. But uh, he watched it without me, so I was upset about that. So I should just, like, watch it by myself sometime. But, uh, what is it? Um, I don't know, like, in the early 2000s, or, like, mid-2000s, or 2010, I don't know. Mm. And, not, not 10. Yeah, I do know Panic at the Disco is, but I'm not a, I'm not a huge, huge fan, because the thing is, is, like, I was before Panic at the Disco being well popular like m my type of music when I was in high school was like the new metal like Corn, Limp Bizkit, Deftones, things like that and then Panic at the Disco came after that so Panic at the Disco was like after I graduated high school so it wasn't like kind of the music that I grew up with like that shaped my like world at the time so I know who they are and I know some of their music but I didn't actively like buy their albums and stuff like that like I did of like Deftones and Korn, Shame, Shameful, Limp Bizkit <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, there's a lot of good anime. But as I was saying, like, in the early 2000s, like, they had Moe was like the theme that everything was and it just seemed like everything was kind of similar. There was lots of slight slice of life stuff and I like that kind of stuff but it just seemed like kind of overwhelming at the time and now they have things that are so different with like um really intriguing stories and I feel like Boku no Hero is like one of my favorite in terms of character development so yes yes um so yeah let me go downstairs and I'm gonna grab some things and I am going to give Jinro a treat and I'll take you guys with me all right Ooh, you're coming with. 
Yeah, I grew up like uh, with uh, metal and stuff like that, like Black Sabbath, um, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Rolling Stones, all that stuff because my mom listened to that. Um, and well, she liked Beatles. She liked a bunch of different music, so I grew up with a bunch of different stuff. Okay. What down with your baby? You want a treat? Do you want a treat? Okay, come on. <laughs> come on, let's go. Let's get a treat. Let's go. Ooh, here's one. This is a duck biscuit, grain free, because Jinro's allergic to grain and it gives them big tummy aches. Yeah, we don't want big tummy aches for the pupper. <laughs> Hold on, this is really hard to do with one hand. And and see that like yellow ball next to his food bowl over there? That's like literally the one from the video I posted a few weeks ago of his birthday surprise of the ball pit. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to open this up with one hand. This is very difficult. Okay, stick him up. Good boy, dance. Can you show everybody to dance? Oh yeah, good boy, sit. Speak, speak. Good boy. Wave. Say hi. Wave. <laughs> good boy. There you go. You did very good. He does know how to stick them up and uh, spread them too, but and now he's going to whine and try to bury it because that's what he does. If I don't stick it in the Kong, this is what he does. He whines and like tries to bury it in the couch. You gonna bury it? You gonna bury it or do you want me to put it in your Kong? Oh God, Jinro, how'd you get hair all over this? <laughs> oh my goodness, having like hardwood floors and then a sheddy dog, it gets everywhere, even when I clean it every day. Okay, this is like difficult. Here. Eh. Entertaining, I know, just looking at my feet. Ew, some people are into that, though, but, you know, no hate, whatever. Here you go. Take your Kong. There. He won't whine when it's in his Kong. Good boy! A Kong is a type of uh, dog toy that's made out of, like, a heavy rubber that they like to chew on, and you can stick, like, peanut butter or treats in there, and it's like a puzzle for them to figure out. So it gives them something to do. And, uh... You know, so they're not bored. Yes, yeah, so let me grab the things. This is, I wanted to grab these and show them to you earlier, but like I said, I just am, I'm so prepared for everything. Yeah, it's a brand, Kong, that's like the original Kong thing, but they make a bunch of different stuff. And I know I had a different box. I know I had more than, oh, there it is. There it is. Boop. Okay, let's uh, let me try to get up the stairs with uh, two hands full of things. <sighs> this is gonna be difficult. <laughs> Hopefully, oh hello, Sasha Boo. <clears throat> yes, this is a good look. As as graveyard girl would say, engage earthworm. <clears throat> Where'd my chin go? So flattering, such a good angle. Looks good on everybody. Okay. <laughs> I also wanted to share some of my favorite YouTubers accounts with you guys because I wanted to, ooh, that's a good shot of my hand, sorry about that. Because there's a few people I like watching on here that, and I'm out of breath already, see? See, I'm so out of shape. But I'm so out of breath already from walking up the stairs and grabbing things and ugh. But yes, there's some YouTubers I wanted to tell you guys about a little later on. But for now, let's uh, look at some toys that I got over the past week too. That's another thing I did is buy a lot of toys. So at a local shop here called Loho, I don't know if it's like, if it's a chain or what. But they sell like a bunch of anime and pop culture related things. And sadly, uh, a lot of the stuff they have, well, over half of the stuff they have is like bootleg 
but I don't think they know that. Like, their supplier's lying to them. Like, a lot of their figures are bootleg, but they do get some official blind box stuff in. And, like, I usually own... This is, like, how you know this one's, like, official because it has the actual um, seal. And they have some Sailor Moon stuff that has the toy seal. But, so, these are... These are official, and then I want to show you some of these that I got, too. These are official, too, but these aren't from Japan, so I don't know if they make bootlegs of these guys yet. So, yeah, there's, there's a, it's like half and half when you go in there. Like, half of the anime stuff is bootleg, and half of it's not. But since I've been collecting things for a very long time, it's like I kind of can tell, you know, what is and what's not. So, um funny story before I go into this when I used to live in Boston there was an anime store and it ended up going out of business and then another one took its place and the guy who <laughs> the guy who owned it was very nice but his supplier like all of his Studio Ghibli stuff was 100% authentic everything was real hi Camilla how are you and so he had a bunch of little blind box stuff of like blind box mini nendoroids and, and other types of figures, but they were blind. Like at one point in time, a long time ago, there were no bootlegs of blind box figures, but now there's a whole bunch and you can kind of tell by the printing on the box. If it looks a little fuzzy or the colors aren't that bright, it means that most likely that they are a bootleg. And so this store, I wrote a Yelp review for it, like, when I lived in Boston. It's okay, no worries, Tracy. Love you, too. Um, so, like, when I went to the store, I noticed everything was bootleg, and I felt bad for them. And that's, like, I'd go there, but I would never buy anything, and I felt bad. Because I, when I go into a store, like, I, I hate not going and getting something, like, especially if it's, like, locally owned and not, like, a huge, like, corporation. But, so, I put on Yelp, I said, I doubt that the owner knows, and he's a really nice guy, but most of the items in this place are bootlegs, so if you're, like, a hardcore figure collector, I would shop elsewhere. That's what I said. And then the guy, he responded to me, and he was really upset. He's like, I get from uh, mine from a trusted supplier, and blah, 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 who are you to say this? And he's like, how can you tell? And then... The first thing I sent him was a link to Nendoroid, like the Good Smile company, and they were showing how to spot bootlegs, and one of the bootlegs that they used as an example was one of the ones in his store that was a bootleg. And like, it's like he completely ignored what I sent to him. And he was just really upset and offended instead of just like being, I'm getting swindled by my supplier. Yeah, I felt bad for him because honestly, I'm not trying to insult him. He's nice. I just didn't want him getting screwed. And then and then his uh, you know, shoppers, like his customers getting screwed. Um and then he also had like this is before they started re-releasing Sailor Moon things. This is before Crystal was ever announced, like Sailor Moon Crystal. Um he had like some new Sailor Moon plushies and one of them was like a Eternal Sailor Moon style doll and it was so funny because the brooch for, like, her transformation was actually Kiro's head from Card Captor Sakura. <laughs> I was like, it's a cute looking bootleg. It was a good looking bootleg, but it's still a bootleg. <laughs> I have a few Nundroids. Um, I think out of the ones I have, I like my Umaru Nundroid, High Score Girl, and I love my old Yoko one. And I really, really want to get the new Kamina um, Nendoroid that's coming out. But, bef but before I go more on a tangent, so I went to Loho. Like I said, I don't know if there's more of that store around the U.S. or in in L.A. Um, yeah, they're getting better at bootlegging Nendoroids to where they look very, um, very, uh, like the original. And there are some figures that are coming out that look very much like the original, too. Which is kind of crazy. The bootlegs are getting better nowadays. But anyway, so these are, it's called Pudu Pudu, like uh, Pokemon Pudu Pudu. And these are like squishies, but they're not foam, they're like jelly squishies. And um, so the one I wanted to get, 
So they have Pikachu, Gengar, Slowpoke, Rowlet, Ditto, and I honestly forget this guy's English name, but in Japanese is Namakobushi? Namakobushi? And so I want a Slowpoke, and they only have four boxes, so I bought all four, even though I'm only showing two of you. I have three of the squishy Pokemons in here, um, but uh, I got a duplicate, so I gave one of the duplicates to my friend. Um, so the one I, the ones I ended up getting, which weren't, wasn't the one I wanted, <laughs> wasn't the one I want, or it actually it wasn't any of the ones I wanted except for maybe one. <laughs> so, um, okay, here's, uh, here's this guy. I haven't taken them out of the package yet because these guys, the type of like squishies they are, they get lint and hair stuck to them very easily. So they're like the jelly type squishies. You might have seen like those viral videos on Facebook of like the cat who's like lying down like this and he's all chubby and they have like a phone case and you can like squish him and move him around and stuff. So that's like the same kind of squishy. So that's, there he is. Kind of cute. Oh yeah, Pukamuku. Yeah. It's cute. I mean, I was just going to keep them, but uh, yeah, like I, I, th I might have resell but then i have two that i know that some of my friends yeah this is puka puka i remember now it's cute i think I'm, I'm gonna keep this one for myself and open it but then the other two i have i know that i have friends who really like them so i might give them to them but uh, i might keep the other one i don't know it's, it's like hard so the this was honestly the first one i got was rowlet Bloop, bloop. Yeah, I try not to scalp, but man, I will tell you. So the store itself is scalping, right? I paid about $15 a piece for these when I know in Japan they're probably half that. They're probably half that. But yeah, Rowlet's really cute. I do like Rowlet. But yeah, squishy, squishy. But yeah, I see when I tried looking online for these guys so I could just buy Slowpoke by himself, like they were like the people were selling them for 2025 and like I know that's ridiculous and this is like this is ridiculous too 15 bucks ridiculous I wish I had a Pokemon Center here I have to see if there's one in LA I don't even know if there is so that's cute got Rowlet got Pukumuku cute hi Muhammad how are you and then Okay, so the last and final one I got is Ditto! <laughs> oh my god! So Ditto's really cute, and I think that this is like the most appropriate Pokemon for like this, like squishy, being squishy, because Ditto's a blob. He kind of looks like a slime, so this is like very appropriate. Ooh, LA does have a Pokemon Center. Ooh. Maybe I can convince my husband to go with me on Sunday. Yeah, Ditto does look like Jello. <laughs> so I thought that was cute. I mean, obviously I didn't get the Pokemon I wanted, but uh, all the ones that I did get are all cute. There's, like, no Pokemon that's not cute. And I do know, they say they have a secret one, but I know what the secret one is because I looked it up online. Shame, shame, shame. But it's uh, Ditto Pikachu. And I was hoping I'd get that because I thought that'd be really cute. Ditto! So cute. Oh, my, my heart. And then it comes, it was supposed to come with candy. I thought it said it came with candy. But obviously it didn't. So like 15 bucks, it's totally not even worth it. In Japan, a box of six of these is just 30. I wish, my God. Yeah, they are totally just like scalping me. Will do, Muhammad. Will do. I know that the situation over there is absolutely horrible, and, like, I feel like over here in America, we don't talk about it as much as we should. <sighs> like, there's just so much crap going on in the world right now, so I, I don't want it to seem like that I'm not aware of the things that are going on. I don't like getting political on my channel or anything like that, because this is just a place where... People can, like, come and, like, look at cute things and kind of de-stress because God knows that there's so much going on in the world today that is just so anxiety, like, inducing and, whew, yeah. But I wish there was more love in this world and not hate and ignorance. 
But, uh, let's see. This, this is like all the ones that, here's a better picture. Let's see if it'll focus. I'm using my phone to stream. But, yeah, Gengar would have been cute. Gengar would have been cute, but... Oh well, can't win them all. I bought all all four boxes that they had, and I know that they're probably not going to get any in stock anytime soon because I think these are a couple months old. I don't know. Don't know. Okay, on to let me put this over here. Oh man, we're almost an hour in. Anyway. We're almost an hour into the stream. That's kind of crazy. I can talk forever. This, that's all I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see a Japanese school bag behind me? The Randosuru? Um, Yeah, Tracy. I thought they were, like, old. So they probably aren't going to get any in. Unless they already have some stock and they just didn't put it out. So I'm going to, like, go there periodically and, like, peep it and see if they get any in. And then waste all my money again. Um... Uh, new cosplays on the horizon? Oh, I might. Okay, so AX is coming up and I wanted to do something new, but I don't have the time to sew anything. And I have this. Let me let me see. Oh, I'd love to cosplay Taki. She's awesome. I really like Sungmina too. But so I have this uniform and I know it's not 100% accurate, but I thought about doing Himiko from Boku no Hero or My Hero Academia. Because I can literally Amazon Prime a wig. Ooh, what the heck? Sorry. <laughs> I can literally Amazon Prime a wig and a sweater. And I have the skirt that goes to this and all I have to do is shorten it. And I can get it done, you know, in like a week. And I love Mako too. Mako's great. She's my favorite character. But it's like, in time for Anime Expo, even if I have, I, I think I'll be working that weekend. But I only work part time, so I'll be off like half half day anyway so I should be able to check it out at least one full day or one half day but uh yeah I I thought about doing Himiko there's a lot of stuff I want to do plush guts you mean guts from um berserk so it, anime expo is in Los Angeles so no yeah Kiki's really cute too that'd be very simple to do Oh, Mako's dog. Oh, yeah, Guts. Yeah, the pug. I've seen... They have plushies of Guts, and he's really cute. I wish I... I, I oh, you know what would have been cool, though? So, like, when I lived up north in Northern California, there was... Uh, my, my dog's best friend was a pug. His name was Milo, and that would have been cool to do a photo shoot with Milo. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, I've seen them, Super Console Brothers. I've seen them, and I've, I have actually, like, a micro plushie of a stomach ache because I've always had stomach aches, and my friend bought it as a gift for me. But, yeah, I've seen I've seen things. Um, Let's get into this before I just keep blabbing on because I can just... I hope you guys really like the sound of my voice <laughs> because, like, all I do is talk. I don't have I don't have it in me. I think it's actually in my uh I don't have it in me. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't have it on me. It's in my husband's car. He's at work right now. But yeah, I, I left it in his car. We kept it in there as a little car buddy. Um I had that years ago, like over ten years ago. <laughs> I can't even like I'm loose in my mind. So anyway. Um when my friend from New York came and visited for E3, we learned that he too loves My Hero Academia, and my friend Nessa really loves this series, so they kind of, like, uh, were going on and talking about it, and we saw, like, a, a Hot Topic, um, at a mall that we were at had these, and, like, my friend bought all ten that they had left, and we opened them up and hoped to get Deku, or Midoriya, Izuku, here. And we ended up getting uh, two, and so my friend Leonard kept one, and then my friend Nessa kept one. But I wanted Deku, too. Ashido, yeah, Mina Ashido, I want to cosplay her so 
bad. She is my favorite out of all the girls in there. And then my favorite guy is Tenya. Like, Tenya Ida, and, like, nobody likes him. I mean, there are some people online who I don't know who I know like him, but none of my friends are like, Ida's so, like, straight-laced and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's what I like about him. I think he's cute. He's smart. He's funny. And he, he uses his head, well, sometimes, you know. And But I like Kirishima, too. He is, like, my second favorite. And, oh, yeah, Tenya's got those killer calves. <laughs> And like, I sound like a creep because I'm like a 33 year old like woman, like talking about like a fictional teenager, but <laughs> like, I feel horrible. But no, Tenya's a sweetheart. He's a good boy. And then I also like Kirishima. And it's funny because when I took like a what a my hero character are you quiz, I actually got Kirishima and a lot of my friends agreed with it, so... <laughs> Chris Hansen. He's like, I'm gonna need you to sit right there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh god. Oh god. I'm gonna get arrested if I leave the house. He's like, that's your choice. And then, of course, you get arrested when you leave the house. <laughs> so anyway, we opened up a whole bunch of these. Um, uh, we got everybody except for... We got everybody except for All Might on the first, uh, on the first pulls. Tanya and Bakugo. So I went over, I went out and got more because I wanted to see if I could uh, get the ones that were missing. Oh yeah, and the, the missing, they have like two mystery ones. So this mystery one, just in case you guys get them for yourself, this one is Deku in his school uniform, and this one is Mineta. Nobody likes him. Grape boy. Pervert, perverted grape. <laughs> You know, and we ended up getting him, and he looked ridiculous, and my friend Juan kept him because nobody else likes him. <laughs> I would have kept him, too, if my friend Juan didn't want him so bad, so, like, um, anyway, so I went, so this one is a one that we got, yes, the grapest, tied to the gra radiator, I, yeah, I know, I know all about that. So anyway, uh, I got him, we had like several, well, we had two duplicates of him, and my husband kept one, and then the other one went to my friend Juan and his girlfriend Nessa. Um, we got Todoroki, and like at first I was like, I was like, why is like his, his like fire half like covered in ice, and then I remembered like earlier in the show, you know, that's how it was. Because I'm thinking, I'm like, we're on season three, and this is, like, still on season one. It's like that old, like, Black Eyed Peas, like, lyric. It's like, you're so, I'm so 2008. You're so 2000 and late, you know? <laughs> That's how I felt. Hot. Yeah, icy hot. Icy hot, boy. <laughs> so we got him. It's cute. Um, let's see who else. Oh yeah, we got my boy, Kirishima. Oh my god, look at his hair. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> he looks like the sun. Like, there he is. So, super cute. Love this boy. He's adorable. And I like him and, and Mina. Like, I totally, like, I'm not like a hardcore shipper. Like, I'm just like, yeah, like, I like these two characters together as a couple. Yeah, that's cute. Because I kind of ship, uh, like, Ochako. Or Uraraka and Deku together. Because, like, I think they'd be cute together. But I'm not, like, a hardcore, like, it's this way or death, blah, you know. But, yeah, I know, yeah, he totally looks like he just got out of bed. <laughs> I don't know. Out of all of them, I think this one's the one that doesn't look like the character that much. There's so Something's off. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but, um... Oh, excuse me. So... Those were the ones that I kept from the first night when we bought, when my friend bought a whole bunch of them and we opened them. And so I wanted uh, more. And I wanted to find Froppy and Tenya and all of my, actually, you know, I wanted all of them except for Bakugo. I'm not a big fan of Bakugo, but I'm hoping that later on in the series they'll, like, have a story about him that makes me like him, kind of like they did with Todoroki. And, but that hasn't happened yet. And I'm just like, Bakugo, you kind you kind of a horrible person. No, I'm like he's not absolutely horrible because obviously he wants to be a hero. He doesn't want to be a villain. But I'm um, just like 
I kind of think you're a jerk. <laughs> you know, like he's such a jerk to Deku, and I don't, I don't like that. That brings back bad memories of like high school. Have I ever met any famous actors? No, but I've met like famous game producers. I met Kojima in 2010. Hideo Kojima. I wish I would have gotten to meet one of my favorite actors. I really like Seth Rogen, and I like Jack Black, and I'd like to go meet them. That'd be cool. So the four that I got, I got, ooh, I got my boy Tanya! Like, he's so cute! But I don't know why they gave him black hair, because his hair's like a dark blue, but like in, in these figures they gave him uh, black hair. Look at those calves! <laughs> There's his like little jet, jet, like his little engine. Oh god, he's so adorable. <laughs> his forehead's like super huge. It's like, not, it's not a forehead, it's a five head. <laughs> it's so cute. And yeah, no dead legs, even <laughs> they're so skinny. Like, I look like South Park characters in these like keychains. Um, and then, ooh, guess what we got? We got Froppy! Honestly, I think Froppy is, like, the most detailed one out of these keychains. And I really like how they did the hair. That's, like, the little hair bow. It's, like, just a thin piece of, like, rubber. It's so cute. And then, like, her legs, like, go out, like, she's looking like she's walking. It's adorable. My husband said, though, that this makes it look like she has a mustache. <laughs> But it's so cute. I love it so much. I wish they'd make more of the girls, though. Because the only girl characters that they made out of this whole series was Froppy and, like, Ochako. I'm like, come on, man. You can do better than that. Hopefully they'll make, like, a second series with more characters. And hopefully they come out with villains. Because I kind of like the villains, too. Like, everybody in that show. Oh, man. It's just good. Even, I like, Bakugo has his moments, but he's just definitely not my favorite. And then I got Deku. Mm, Deku's so cute. Yeah, they should have done Momo, and they should have done Mina. Like, I, I would have died if I had a Mina, like, keychain like these. But honestly, I think uh, Deku is probably, like, one of the cutest as well, out of all the designs that they came out with. His face is adorable and everything. Yeah, I don't know. They just feel like female characters aren't going to sell products or toys. But, like, I just think that that's really dumb. Because they do. Let's see. And then the last one I got, I found yesterday. Oh, Tracy, my favorite anime is Saber Marionette J. It's an oldie but goodie. But yes, I got, I found All Might. Ah, it's so cute! <laughs> Look at him! Look at those strong cheekbones there. Yes, me and him kind of got the same cheekbones. You can't really tell from that side. Man, you can't even see the shadow, but yeah, I have like cheekbones like his that kind of dig in on the side. That's why I never like, when I do my makeup, I don't contour here because like I naturally have that shadow. So yes. You know, and then they, I, I'm, this is probably going to be a spoiler, but everybody thinks he's American, right? Like, it, it, it turns out that he is. <laughs> so I was like, yeah! So hopefully that's not a huge, like, spoiler. I'm not trying to, like... I don't really think that has anything to do with much of the plot point. But yeah, they call him That Stupid American in one of the newest episodes. One of the newer episodes. And I was like... Well, that uh, confirmed my suspicions. I thought he was. No, I'm not going to spoil big things. So no, no, no. But All Might is American. I mean, I mean, like, come on. He's got, like, moves called, like, Delaware Smash. <laughs> and, like, Detroit. No, is it? It's Detroit Smash. And I'm like, but Detroit's not a state. Like, everything else he yells out is a state. I'm like, Detroit's a city. But, you know, whatever. It's American, so. Mm, eh. But, yes. Those, those are all the ones that I got. Captain Falcon or All Might? All Might. All Might would win. I'm a fan of All Might. Oh yeah, he did say Delaware Smash. Does he say Detroit Smash and Delaware Smash? Because he smashes a lot. He'd be smashing all the time. <laughs> that would be cool. His mullet. I love his mullet. It's so, like, <laughs> cheesy. And Texas Smash. Yeah, I remember that too. Dang. 
No, it's a good, it's a good series, and I really, like I said, I really like the character development, and I think so far the third season's my favorite. Yeah. So. Full counting! Sorry. <laughs> I'm, like, getting, I'm getting excited. I think that there's a new episode either coming out tonight or tomorrow. I don't know. The end of the third season's near. It's getting close. But, meh. I've been in, on here for uh, a little over an hour now. Dang. Um, if you guys got any questions, this will be the Q&A part. Because um, right now I showed you everything I want to show you. I talked about what I want to show you. Oh, this uh, shirt is Powerline from my one of my favorite Disney movies, uh, Goofy Movie. And on the back it's got like fake tour city, like where he was touring. It says 92 or 94. It says standout tour 94. I got this at Target in the guys section. But I was like, yeah! Dude, no, I feel the same. Like, Super Console, that's not a weird thing. Like, there's YouTubers I want to meet. Like, oh, yeah, that's, it, what I, the, that's what I wanted to call you. They're, they're called the, the, the Claw Couple SG. Like, they're from Singapore. You guys should check out their channel. They do a lot of, like, Toriba and Claw Machine videos from local arcades over there in Singapore. And they're really nice people. Very sweet. I do have some alpaca plushies. They are up. Ooh, hold on. Let me unplug this and turn you around here. They're up there. I got four. I did have more, but I gave a couple to my friends because, you know, as you can see, um, space is getting pretty limited. Oh, cool. Tracy, they'll be happy to hear that. I know that uh, they've been, I think they just now got to 1,000 subscribers or something like that. And, like, I want their, uh, I really want their um, channel to get better. Oh, I'm from your hometown, like Cincinnati, Ohio? Because that's originally where I'm from. I've been all over the place. Yes. You get that I'm female, but I, I'm, I'm hearing you out. I hear, I'm hearing you out. Come on. Youngstown. Okay, yeah, I know where Youngstown is. Oop, sorry. There's my, oh, there's my boo. There she is. Licking her butt. Nobody wants to see that. But yeah, I still need to do a room tour. Whew. A uh, female character that is not arousing but instead is adorable, cute enough to eat. <laughs> um, I think Ochiko. Ochiko's cute. Yeah, I have two cats. Um, but the other one left. She was in here, but she left. Elf Lilith is cute, too. Elfel's really cute. I have an Elfel, uh, figure downstairs in one of the display cases. The cat's names, uh, the black and white one that you just saw is Sasha. And I have a big fluffy one. Her name is Naomi. And Sasha I named after... I know that you guys probably know the show Adventure Time. A long time ago he had like this short like uh, animation. Uh, and it was just like a rough sketch. And he's like... He's like... Um, talking to an ex-lover. His name is Bueno the Bear. He's talking to an ex-lover. And he's like... Uh, what are you trying to say, Sasha? And that's what I named my cat after is just a really dumb little uh animated sh animated short and Naomi's named after a character in um Metal Gear Solid what anime convention is my favorite hmm I've been to a lot but the my anime convention that was my favorite no longer exists and I I think it's my favorite just purely because it was my first convention I'd ever attended, and it was a small local convention that I knew everybody there, and it was comfortable. It was called Sugoi Con. It was in Cincinnati, and then they moved it to, like, northern Kentucky. Because Cincinnati, like, borders, like, Indiana and northern Kentucky. So... Yeah, shipping for alpacas is expensive, but Tracy, I would look on, like... Uh, Amazon. Amazon should have this. Uh, the shipping, like, if you have Prime, shipping's free. Whoa! There goes my phone. Sorry. <laughs> uh, ever think about cosplaying Naomi? I do. Yeah, I like her. I liked her in, like, the latest game that she was in. I'm not gonna spoil it, but, you know, she was, like, in her doctor's suit, and it was, like, yellow and black, kind of like a bee. <laughs> and I thought that was, uh, 
cool color combination and I liked how she looked. So, and I like Sunny too. Oh no! Yeah, sometimes you gotta watch out for that. Um, there's another website called Tokyo Otaku Mode. I'm not sure how much their shipping is though, but they sell nothing but like legit things. And a lot of times it's stuff that you would get in the arcades. So try Tokyo Otaku Mode. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, and I've seen some, excuse me. Good God. I apologize. I had a burger earlier with lots of garlic. <laughs> Just be glad you're not here because you'd smell my garlicky breath. Oh man, I've seen people steal things right off the table at anime conventions before and just like run out of the dealer's hall with the stuff. So I'm just like, why? Why? Like, I know you're desperate, but come on, don't commit a crime. <laughs> That's Waluigi. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's expensive, Tracy. Hmm. Where else? Sometimes you can get a good a, a deal on eBay, but sometimes again you get you get screwed. I'm trying to think of a website that that would sell that so that shipping wouldn't be. I would I would check like okay, there's a Facebook group. Not sure if you're on Facebook, but there's a Facebook group called Kinda Like Otaku Craigslist, and people put all kinds of anime merch and. And like plushies like that on there and a lot of their prices are reasonable and shipping's uh, reasonable and also Tracy there are Toriba groups on Facebook where a lot of people will resell their winnings for good uh, good prices and uh, free shipping sometimes depending on the person yes yes super console ask away Most dumbest, the good kind of dumb cosplay I ever saw. Okay, um, dumb, but I loved it. And yes, I love sushi and I like mochi. I love both. But the dumbest cosplay I ever saw, it wasn't dumb. It was just, it w and it was creative with the types of materials it used. Because obviously it was a low budget cosplay. And this was like this person's like first or second costume. And this was like back in 2002. The guy was going as Sora from Kingdom Hearts. And he had a inside out white t-shirt and the trim, like the colored trims or stripes was colored with Crayola marker. And it wasn't even, it wasn't like taped to make the, see, I don't know if this was, it's, it's like so bad it's good, but then also you don't know if it's the person's first cosplay and that they tried really hard or if they made it to look that way on purpose. Like I couldn't tell. But, like, either way, the guy was really nice, and I don't want to, like, seem like I'm insulting him. Um, and, like, you know, depending on wherever his level is, like, or, you know, where if he's just starting off or if he did it on purpose, I, it was still enjoyable and recognizable. You could recognize who the character was. But, okay, so it was a inside-out white t-shirt with the trim, the colored trim being done in Crayola marker. <laughs> um... The shoes he literally ducked, duct taped or masked, it was duct tape. He duct taped styrofoam blocks to the tips of his shoes and colored them with Crayola marker. Um, his gloves were just like work gloves that he cut the tips off of with a scissors and they were like fraying all over the place because they were knitted. Um, and his keyblade was made out of cardboard tubes that were scotch taped together. And yes, I have heard of Zombies Ate My Neighbors. I used to have that game for uh, Genesis back in the day. But yeah, dude, no, that was like... <laughs> like, I don't want to laugh because I don't want to like laugh. I don't want to seem like I'm laughing at him, but I mean, it was just so precious. You know what I'm get gonna say? Like, it was just so wholesome <laughs> I mean when when you start off cosplaying especially if you make your own stuff I mean like nobody starts off being like amazing at everything and it takes a lot of time and skill and you gotta learn so I mean everybody has a starting point <laughs> and some people yeah are better than others when they started off you know some people just I guess have it 
and some others take longer to get used to. I don't know. It's like really funny. But now uh, nowadays you can just buy pretty much whatever costume you're looking for online if you can't uh sew. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like I like that. But I but me being as old of a cosplayer as I am, you know, from back in the day when that pre-existing costumes, pre-made things didn't exist. Um, and you had to sew, like, I'm so used to sewing my own stuff that I'm so picky, like, about bought, store-bought costumes that I'm like, oh, I don't like how this looks, or I don't like the materials that they chose to make this, and, but then again, I'm like, but I feel too lazy to make my own thing, and then I'm also like, well, what if people think I suck, or that I'm not good anymore at cosplay because I bought my costume instead of making it like I have been all these years, you know, it's like, just really dumb, insecure stuff, you know. So, I mean, I, I don't judge people based on their cosplay. You know, that doesn't really bother me. How much time do I take to win a prize on Tori? But it depends. Some can take, like, a few minutes. <laughs> well, usually everything goes by in a few minutes because uh, you can spend a lot of money in a very short amount of time on Tori. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's just really weird. What is it? What's going to sound dumb? Come on, Superman, now you're just, yeah, you're asking me some silly things. You're silly. But dogs, I hear it all day long, so I'm good at imitating. <laughs> well, the Pearl Necklace series, yeah. I remember when they had, like, the little ones on Toriba, and good God, they made them very hard to win. So, like, it was more expensive to, like, try to win it than to buy it somewhere. I don't know. Sometimes it's like that on Toriba. Like, if there's a prize you really, really want, and you're not confident that you're going to win it in, like, a small amount of money, the best bet is to look for it on Tokyo Otaku Mode and just pay the the cost. Uh, off topic. No, you're not off topic. It doesn't matter. This is the Q&A part, so I'll just answer anything, um, unless the question's inappropriate. <laughs> um... Tips and tricks for Toriba. I mean, like, dude, I I will say that I have spent more than I should have on certain prizes, and then way less for others. Like, it all depends on like the setup and like if somebody gave up and I and I got like lucky, or that it like was a ping pong dropper and it happened to drop in the spot, you know, on on one. Oh, thanks, Orca. Thank you so much. I love making them, but good God, my wa like I said before, my wallet does not like that I do those videos so frequently. Um, but number like number one, my advice is watch how others win and play before even attempting it, because maybe you might figure out how to win it in the the least amount of plays. Number two. Watch videos of people playing on YouTube or if there's any Twitch streams or stuff like that to try to get some kind of idea of how certain games are played, like how certain claw machines or setups are played because there's all types of different setups and they're all one in different ways. And and not even Tori, but like if you can watch like somebody who lives in Japan who plays uh uh, UFO catchers because they have all kinds of different setups at the arcades like uh, one of the families that I've watched is called uh, Kawaii Arcade Masters That is Kawaii Arcade Masters. They do a lot of arcade uh, Videos of them going to their arcades and winning lots of different prizes So like you can see like what the method is behind winning a certain prize in a certain setup. So yeah, Oh, yeah! Dude, I just won. So today, like, I know my husband's not going to watch this stream, <laughs> but today I won the Darling and the Franks lying down plushie, and uh, I got it for his birthday. So, yeah. Yeah, the Crane Couple, too. I love the Crane Couple. I started watching them a while back ago because I always liked Crane videos, and then I found their videos because they were doing Toriba, too. Like, their their Toriba videos are way older, um, and th that's before I got into Toriba, but I started watching their Round 1 because I was going to Round 1 very frequently when I was in NorCal, and, uh... So I watched them to be like, okay, how is this thing one? And I really liked them as a couple. They seem really nice and sweet. And then um, I watched their older Toriba videos and stuff like that. Yeah, I saw that they're doing Toriba Tuesdays again. I know 
they said that Tory buzz starting to get harder and more expensive and uh that seems to be the same sentiment in uh, a lot of the Tory bug groups i'm in on facebook they say that the prices have gone up way too high and it's a lot harder to win and even in the year that i've played on toriba i can say yes they have changed uh, even in the just the year i don't even know what sky skipper is i'd have to look that up but have I ever collabed with any other people? No, but I'd like to. I I mean, the Crane Couple... You know what? The Crane Couple actually, like, commented on my latest Toy Bot unboxing. The the Pokemon one from last week? They they commented on it. I was like, ah! And, I, like, they, they travel all the way up and down uh, California. And, like, I always wanted to meet them when they were in NorCal, like, sometimes when they would go visit. But I live closer to them now because I think they live in San Diego and I live in Los Angeles and they're about only two hours apart drive driving wise and I know they come up to LA a lot so like I would love to do a collab video with them if like they do yeah dude I, I'll tell you Orca like I've had graveyard girl has replied to some of my comments and some fan art I did like on Instagram and Twitter and then she also followed me on Twitter several months ago and I about died <laughs> Because, like, I really like Graveyard Girl and Bunny. Like, I relate to her on, like, a, a personal level. Like, we have a lot of the same interests. I mean, obviously, I like anime and cute stuff. And, like, she might not like this as much as I do. But I really like, like, the horror stuff and her music and her fashion choices. Because I love all that kind of stuff myself. And she seems, like, really down to earth. And I relate to her also with having anxiety and depression. But... For me, I am I finally decided to take the plunge and try medication, and it's worked out for me. I used to be into horror films when I was younger. Like, when I was a kid, I really liked the classic ones, like Frankenstein's Monster, the, like, Thing from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Nosferatu, those kind of things. So, yeah, like, I dealt with anxiety and depression stuff, too, and, like, before I was on medication and I was watching her videos, a lot of times when she was doing tea vlogs, she doesn't do them as much now anymore. Um, but when she was talking, like, one, I could relate to her energy in the video. Like, I'm like, I am like this, too. Like, I, like, saw kind of, like, a reflection. And I didn't feel, like, so alone. Because, like, when you have that kind of th stuff, even though you know people, like, have, you know people are out there suffering from anxiety and depression your anxiety and depression makes it feel like you're isolated like you you get what i'm saying even though you can logically know that other people have deal with it your your emotions and and your mental health can make you feel like you know like that you're alone with it so um now i'm on medication and it's worked it's worked great like, I used to isolate myself, too, because I didn't feel like, I, I mean, like, I'm getting really personal and candid here because I never really talked about it, but, um, yeah, I used to feel like I wasn't worth, like, having friends or, like, nobody really wanted to hang out with me or that, you know, that people just were nice to me because, like, they had to be or, like, you know, like, just, like, things that I would tell myself that obviously weren't true. Um, and now I'm doing a lot better. Like, when I moved to LA, you know, I had been on medication for a year. I was able to find a job of doing something I like. And I'm going out and doing a lot more. So, it it's just, it's great. So, I'm a lot happier. And I'm glad that, yeah, that I was, that I took the plunge. Because, man, it is scary. It is scary to ask for help. It is scary to admit that you need it or that you should get it, right? So, so I did it. I mean, like, medication doesn't work for everyone. Sometimes meditation, meditation's good. Mindfulness is really good. Sometimes just talking to someone else, like therapy, like, is good. So, um, so yeah. So when I watched, like I said, when I watched Bunny's videos, like I just related to it so much, and um, she helped me through a lot. And I and I hope that she has, because I know she said she feels like she doesn't have any friends, but that's probably because of her depression and anxiety make her feel that way. But I hope she knows that you know she's got a lot of people out there who really care about her, and um, 
you know, want to be there for her. And yeah, I mean, but it's hard. It's hard when you are dealing with that. Um, yeah, so I don't want to seem like a Debbie Downer. <laughs> So yeah, what is my favorite plush? I know everybody keeps that. Uh, you, Tracy, have asked me that, and I think somebody else did. It's hard to say. <laughs> I have so many. Um, Lord, let me let me take a look, shall I? Woohoo! Okay, okay, okay. Um, I would say it's a toss up between two. I mean, I really like. I really like the giant cinema roll plushie I won, and I love my axolotl squishy, squishable that my friend Chelsea gave me. But out of Toriba plushies that I've won, is this pink Shiba donut and this pink Shiba that I spent way too much money on. But it was totally worth it. <laughs> it was so satisfying. <laughs> but I also love my axolotls too. But uh, these, I don't know what it is. They're Shibs. They're my favorite color. So, yeah. <laughs> not really anything deeper than that <laughs> um oh yeah and I wanted to share you something or share with you guys a toy that I had when I was a kid this is like from the early 90s um this is the toy from Mattel it's a bath time plushie or bath time plushie it's a bath time toy it's called Shampoodle <laughs> And it's so, like, oh my god, look, it's so anime-looking and pastel. But you can see that, like, it's been really worn. Like, there's, like, stains on it and, like, scuffs. Yeah, I have a Furby, too! It's still, it's still, um, it's still at home in Ohio with my mom. Because she loves the Furby, so she kept it. And then I also have, like, a bunch of older, um... Like, My Little Ponies from the 80s. Like, yeah. I still have that. Although I was really, I was really young in the 80s. So, I, I mean, like, I remember bits and parts of the late 80s. Like, so, especially, like, the cartoons. Like, when I see them, it just kind of, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But it's like a faint memory because I wasn't really old enough. Like, I guess I was four four years old in 1989 so it's like I kind of remember some from the late 90s so yeah so yeah vintage ponies can you count how many plushies you have oh my god uh, it would take me a while I couldn't do it right now because this is not even all of them <laughs> and uh, a lot of in, are in storage right now so I don't even know I got hundreds I can say at least I have hundreds <laughs> Like, counting big and small plushies and everything in between. And a lot of them are ones that I won off of Toriba, believe it or not. So, I don't know. Most of the ones I have in storage are, like, Shiba plushies. Um, yeah, that didn't go with a, the room decor back here. Yeah, it's still daylight, but it stays pretty light outside. Um... Because it's the summer, right? So it's like it stays uh, daylight up until like 9 p.m. right now. So I'm gonna put her away. I don't know if I gave her a name, but I know when I was young, like five or six, I was obsessed with the name Samantha. And oh, thanks, Tracy. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep it up, man. Hustling on YouTube is hard, and I know I only upload once a week, but that's about the all I can handle because you know uh, me working on top of that, and like I, I want to not like do rush videos and stuff like that for you guys, and uh, hopefully things are enjoyable. I the thing is, is that I notice that most of my subscribers or most people who watch my videos watch for Toriba and then when I do things that aren't Toriba um, they're not as like watched not as popular but uh, it's not gonna stop me from doing it anyway because I wanna I like having variety just personally you know but I mean like I guess if like YouTube was my career I would probably just keep doing Toriba over and over and over and over and over and over again but you know I don't want to be too repetitive but yes, and and it's it gets expensive. <laughs> Yay! I like I like watching live streams too because like I like being able to interact with the person. 
That's not like pre-recorded and stuff like that. Bananyan? Oh, I love Bananyan! My favorite Bananyan is like the Otosan, like the, the dad. And I also like the Kuro Bananyan, like the black one, the black kidney. Game walkthroughs? No, I don't play that many video games to do walkthroughs for. Like, I pretty much play games that don't even require walkthroughs, like Splatoon and uh, Animal Crossing. That's the one thing I need to download and pay for tonight is the Octo expansion. I wanted to do that yesterday. I was so exhausted that I didn't. Oh, thanks. I want to do more sh cosplay showcases, but honestly, I haven't made any new cosplays in like a year. Croconana. Okay, I don't have a Croconana, but I have a friend who has like the gi like every single size, like even the gigantic one. They bought it from like I forget what convention they went to and they bought it. Yeah, so much money does disappear to Tori, but that's probably why it's going to take me forever to get a P.O. box. Because I know some of you guys have asked me if I have a P.O. box, um, and I don't. <laughs> and some P.O. boxes are more expensive than others. Yeah, the black one with the red bow tie is so cute. Yeah, I want to do a video on Animal Crossing. Um, I'd like to get like a capture device for my DS. But I think you have to like mod the DS to do that. Yes, and I have heard of Agretzico, and I've watched the whole show, and I love it, and I went to the uh, Agretzico's Den of Rage. I didn't take any video, because it was a really small event. I did take some photos when I was there, but this is, like, the thing I got from the Agretzico event that was here in L.A. Yes. She's so cool. I love her so much. My favorite character is Haida, though. They don't have any merchandise of Haida yet, though. So all the Haida stuff that I see is, like, fan art stuff. And um, if I go to AX, I think uh, if anybody at the Artist Alley has a Haida keychain, I'll probably pick one up. Because he's amazing. He's amazing. Oh, man, yeah, my QB, man. That was several years ago. That's when I was living in Boston. I was living in Boston, man. That was, like, one of my favorite costumes. To tell you about QB, it's like it's one of those costumes that I had wanted to do since I was 15, but I wanted it to like look as good as possible, and I knew back then it wasn't gonna look how I wanted it to look. So years and years later, honing my cosplay skills, and I finally got Solera lenses that made my eyes all black. Oh my god, that was so cool! Like that is one of my favorite costumes. I just love how freaky it looks, but I also think like all black eyes look cute. Some people think it looks scary, but I think it looks cute. So. Um, but yeah, I do, like, for those of you who don't know, I actually have a website, like, hezachan.com, that has all of my costumes, like, ever since I started. So you can see, like, my really, like, badly made costumes from when I was, like, 15 years old. So you can see where I started and kind of see the progression, because I didn't want to take those old costumes down, because I want a place where, like, new cosplayers can see that you have to start somewhere. You know, that's whole, that whole thing. Do I wear the enlarging contacts? Yes, I do. Uh, circle lenses. But I'm all out and I I want to buy some new ones because I, I do like how they make my eyes look. They, like, make your eyes look bigger. And I think with the type of eye makeup I do, it's, like, really flattering. So, um, yeah, I, I really like circle lenses. I used to not for a long time because I was afraid of contact lenses. That's why, I mean, I still love wearing glasses. I like how glasses look on me, but for a long time I wouldn't try uh, contact lenses because I was too afraid to like touch anywhere near my eyes. Like I didn't even like putting eyeliner on, especially if like I wanted to put eyeliner on my waterline. Oh god, it would freak me out because I'd, I'd be afraid I'd poke my eye. Uh, I like Tekken, um, but my favorite character from Tekken is honestly True Ogre. <laughs> it's not even a girl character. Have I ever gotten anything from Japan? Yes, and I've uh, been to Japan twice. I have a lot of stuff from Japan. Oh my god, yay! So you cosplayed Steven? Like, from Steven Universe at, at Kentucky Comic Con? That's cool. Oh, man. Enlarging contact lenses are a thing. Yes, they are. They're called circle lenses, and they have them in different sizes. Like, my favorite ones are the 15 millimeter ones because they make your eyes look, like, really big. They're like the biggest size besides Solera, but you can only, you should only wear them for so many hours because they do cover a, the white part of your eye a, a bit, and it can um, 
deprive your eye of oxygen if you have them in too long. Like, honestly, I think the longest is like five to six hours or seven. I don't know, because I know Solera lenses, they only say wear up to four to five hours, like the, the ones that cover your whole eye. And they're like really thick. So the, the circle lenses they have now are like thinner. So yeah. Um, but I've been on here for a while and I'm getting really tired. Paper mache armor. My friend actually has, uh, I, I know I said I'm getting tired, but that brought up a point. So everybody makes like armor out of warbler and foam and that's great. That's great. But when you're in a hot state like I am, like, or a hot city like Los Angeles, if your armor is out in the sun and it's made out of warbler for a very long time, it's going to start to warp because of the heat because it's like a heat and mold type of material. And so you can reheat it and melt it and reuse it over and over again, right? Um, so, uh, way to get around that and make armor that's durable, lightweight, and won't melt in the sun is paper mache with cardboard, and then on top you put paper clay and you sand it smooth and you can, like, add as much paper clay as you need. But you want to have that, like, either that foam core base or, like, paper mache and cardboard base before you put on the, uh, the paper or the paper clay. My friend Gia Gem actually, I think she came up with that method and she had a tutorial. I don't know if her website's still up. It might be down, but you might be able to find that tutorial somewhere else. Paper clay armor. Paper clay cosplay armor. So it's it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting tired and I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Like I said, I'm sorry that I didn't have the regularly scheduled Friday video today. So hope this made up for it. Um, I always enjoy talking with you guys and, uh, next week I should have a new video, um, where I'm talking about these fun little Japanese candy toys. Yes. And then the week after that should be another Tori Bo unboxing. So yes. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I gotta work tomorrow. Um, but after that, I got three days off, so I'll be working on some videos for you guys. Alrighty. So enjoy the rest of your Friday evening, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys. Woo! Mm, see ya. inbox. I know this is probably really awkward.